Welcome to Betty on the Go. I'm your host, Betty Goodell. We are live streaming at the Accelerated Building downtown at 720 Willette. So if you're walking by, give us a wave. Halloween is around the corner and we have some really terrific guests. They are the modern day Ghostbusters. They, they have a team, Spectral Solutions. They investigate and research paranormal activity in the Windsor-Essex region. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. You're watching Exist TV, streaming live from downtown Windsor, from the Windsor Downtown Business Radio, and this is Betty on the Go with Betty Goodell. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Betty on the Go. I'm your host, Betty Goodell. We have with us here. Um, Chantal and Shannon from Spectral Solutions. They have a really great story of how Spectral Solutions was started. Wait, you want to head that up? Okay. <laughs> um, Chantal is actually um, my daughter, and um, she wasn't. She was always been my birth daughter, but it wasn't until she was 18 um, where we actually met, and uh, I had given her up for adoption. And uh, when we finally got together and we met, we decided er, it was showing that we had a lot of things in common, from loving thunderstorms and horror movies to just being totally intrigued by the paranormal. Absolutely. Um, we, at the time, we also found uh, a few groups on Facebook that had similar interests as far as the paranormal and ghost hunting, and uh, both of us had joined the group. And we found some other like-minded individuals and decided, you know, since we've all had such strong paranormal experiences in our lives, other people must have them as well, and they may need some help dealing with them. So we formed Spectral Solutions. So obviously, both of you have a gift. You want to call it that, right? <laughs> so um, would you say it's because you have a higher form of energy? Um, I think uh, because we've experienced things ourselves, we're more open to it. Um, mm -hmm. we, we take meditation classes and we're currently working on developing um, our sensitive and psychic abilities. And there's been a lot of times we've gone into places and have strongly felt presences and things like that. So we just work on that and build on that. And what kind of equipment do you use when you're going in? If, some, if somebody calls and they say that they have had some strange occurrences, they're scared in their own house. What, what do you use? Do you use recorders? Do you use cameras? Uh, digital recorders are probably the most um, most favorite uh, piece of equipment. Um, that's where we record our EVPs. Um, we have uh, cameras as well, trap cams, infrared trap cams, motion detecting. Um, and we have uh, the little ghost gadgets like a K2 meter and a tri-field meter. And uh, we get a little metaphysical and and use uh, dowsing rods as well as pendulums as well. And so it's not a job that you can go in for one or two hours. You have to probably stay there for quite a few hours to find things out. Yeah. So it's very time consuming. Indeed it is. Um, once we're contacted, we do what we call a preliminary interview. So we mm -hmm. meet with the clients, we discuss the things that are occurring. Um, we'll go around and do base readings with our equipment. So that way when we come back, we know if there's anything out of the ordinary, any crazy spikes. Um, an EMF or things like that. And then uh, the investigations can take, you know, between four and eight hours. And then I think the most time consuming part is the review of the evidence. We have a lot of audio to go over and video to see if anything was captured. And that's right, you can't daydream through it because it could just be a little bit of a spike, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so you've done um, on your website, uh, paranor paranormal. <laughs> Um, public hunts? Uh, with your public hunts. Yes. You've done, uh, you've, you invite the public out to your, to your um, public hunts. And the last one that you just had was last week, October 20th. Well, that was uh, actually our seminar. Seminar, okay. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it was a uh, it, uh, it was a success as mm -hmm. luckily they have all been. Um, had a good showing. I think most people enjoyed themselves. And uh, share a little. We do some research onto some off key topics, paranormal topics. Um, try and showcase some of our evidence that we have gathered, mm -hmm. and uh, just have a really good day. We have lunch. Um, we encourage people to tell us their paranormal experiences and just a room full of people, like-minded people that love a good ghost story. When you do do these investigations, are people quite shocked with what you find? Sometimes. Or surprised? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because a lot of the times when it's uh, like a couple, say the wife is a strong believer and the husband is like, there's no way there's mm -hmm. anything here. But mm -hmm. once they hear the evidence, they're terrified. The wives are like, I told you. And the husbands are like, I don't want <gasps> oh anything to do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. into big babies at yeah. that point. Yeah. And have you ever had people sell their houses because of this? Yes. Yes, we have. Um, my favorite investigation to date was absolutely insane. There was no way to logically explain any of the activity that was occurring. Um, it was a young family that got up in the middle of the night and moved out. We went and investigated about, I'd say, five times minimum. At least. And so. every time something had happened and then the family just couldn't live there anymore. They just sold the house and went on their way. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you also work with real estate agents? Because I know a lot of times mm -hmm. when there's been something, <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's right, if there's been a death in the house, I know even for myself, I like to know the history of the house if somebody was divorced, um, if, there, if there was a lot of turmoil in the house, and especially if someone, even if it was a peaceful death, people kind of want to know and it makes them feel a little bit uneasy, right? Right, right. If it happened in the house. Well, we did have that thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it hasn't gone any further than that. We haven't approached any realtors, actually. We're willing, if you're out there. Sure. <laughs> I was gonna, I was going to say, there was one house, I know, um, that had a stigma behind it. I don't want to say whose house it was. Mm -hmm. And there was a death in the house, and it went, I think it was on the market for about four years. Wow. Because people knew about it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, if you have a house, if you have a clearing... Yeah, that that could possibly make the house more a selling feature. That's right. Yeah, yeah. and w I know what a clearing is, but a lot of people don't know what a clearing is. So can you explain what that is? Sure. Um, we go in, and depending on the beliefs of the homeowners or business owners, um, we tailor it to to that. Um, we do sage smudgings, which tends to be more Native American and spiritual, um, and that will cleanse negative energy. Um, we do work with priests and other spiritual advisors, and they can come in and clear according to the religion of the, the owners. Oh, well, that's interesting. Because mm -hmm. eh, sometimes you think that priests might be against us, but they're, they're open. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a blessing. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. With m and now with all the... Um, public places that you've done, you've done, I mean, Windsor has such a plethora of history and haunted places, sure, right? Yes, yes, so you've done Miss um, Mackenzie Hall, the Duff Baby House, oh. of course, um, the historical Essex train station. Which one yeah. had the most baggage, <laughs> I'd say? Um, I think a big one for us was Mackenzie Hall. Um, um, yes, actually, um, with <laughs> actual just experiences on our own, um, let alone anybody else that was attending the hunt. Yeah. Um, there is a shadow man in the basement of Mackenzie Hall. When we had gone to do some research on the, on the building, we were speaking with the employees there, um, they all said that downstairs in the basement, there's this little thing that plays peekaboo around the corner and they could never catch up with it. It's, it's like a square that you can um, traverse around and they could they would go to the corner and see something duck around the next corner. Um, we were down there, uh, we were coming out of what was called the uh, coroner's office and I was leading a group into the executioner's office and uh, so I'm just waiting for everybody to come out and then I'll, I look over to my right and I see a tall thin black shadow. It was, it's like a silhouette, like a cardboard cutout and then I looked to see if everybody was gone through and I, when I processed what I saw immediately I looked back and he was gone. It, it, I was just—is that with shadow? Or he was just more solid than a more shadow. Solid. Yes. Um, on a separate uh, occasion, the same night, we were in different teams, leading different teams, and uh, we had gone down into the basement with my team, and everyone was going into the coroner's office, and there was one person that was sta staying outside, and I said, called his name out because I thought it was one of the guys on my team, and I said, "Get in here," and he came from from behind me and said, "I'm right here." 
And I said, well, who was oh. that? <laughs> and it was the, the, could be the same shadow person that Shannon had seen yeah. earlier that night. Yeah. It was uh, really you intense. You know how you see somebody leaning against a garage, that the cowboy there with the black cutout? Mm -hmm. It's exactly what he looked like. He wasn't moving. Um, he didn't, you couldn't see any features. He was just black, tall, thin. We both described him the same way. Yeah. And he was just standing there. And we were so excited. We were, we were very yeah. excited. <laughs> we saw him. We saw him. <laughs> We're going to be right back, and we're going to be disgusting, disgusting, discussing more <laughs> ghosts right after these messages. You're watching Exist TV, streaming live from downtown Windsor for the Windsor Downtown Business Accelerator. And this is Barry on the go with Barry Goodell. We'll be right back. Don't let your business challenges intimidate you. In the accelerator, you are not alone. With its state-of-the-art concept and location, you get the best environment to start your business. You have access to open desk or private offices for you to start your new business. Also, you have access to lounge, kitchen area, reception, meeting rooms to receive your clients, and support from entrepreneurs in residence and other entrepreneurs at the Downtown Windsor Business Accelerator. By entrepreneurs, for entrepreneurs. This is the place for your new business. Come and visit and see for yourself. And we're back talking with Chantel and Shannon from Spectral Solutions. They are modern day ghost hunters. They do uh, paranormal investigations and research in the Windsor, Essex area. So when you do encounter any paranormal activity, do you actually feel it? Do you ever feel anything cold on you in the room? Do you feel anything blowing? Have you ever felt a presence? Yes, yes. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, sometimes we walk into a place and we can it's almost uh, like something's pushing against you. It's a very oppressive feeling, a very negative feeling. Um, you can just tell that something isn't right or perhaps something doesn't want you there. And that's, uh, that's a really intense feeling. Yeah, you get to, like, you know, how they say your skin crawls. And the yeah, it's happening right now. You <laughs> <laughs> get the goosebumps and then, you know, every time <coughs> you're going about your business and all of a sudden it just feels like the atmosphere just changed. Everything just went you know south yeah and it, it gets creepy it gets scary um we liken that to the spirit serenities that are there don't want us there any longer so it's it's more or less we've overstayed our welcome and but not all spirits are like that there's oh. some that actually have a very nice yes very welcoming aura, right? you feel very peaceful you feel very calm um there's been times where um, we're investigating and all of a sudden this wave of relaxation comes over all of us and it's almost like you could just fall asleep like a, a big warm hug and so we like in that. The giddiness, you get like a kundalini unfurling kind of uh, giddiness and you yeah. go from just being, you know, straight business-like to lunatic, know, laughing lunatic. our heads <laughs> off. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. like they're almost controlling your emotions, emotions really. Yep, yep. it's exactly so like It's that. almost like a metaphysical. Yes. Very interesting. Now, a lot of people say that spirits are in this world because they haven't passed through the light to the other end. Mm -hmm. Do you have any way of getting them there? 
We have ways to try to get them there. There's no guarantee that they will actually listen or go. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking it's, it's all due to the fact of why they're still here. Unfinished business, they don't realize that they have passed. Um, you know, maybe they just like being here, they're afraid to move on. Um, there's no guarantee. We could always prompt and ask and tell Jokers, them. Jokers. <laughs> <laughs> Let them know that, you know, it, it's peaceful on the other side. But not, not always um, will they go. We do um, work with a couple psychics, and one is a light worker, and she helps to cross them over. Okay. If um, what we try doesn't work out all the time, she'll come in and she can try as well. And you work with mediums as well as psychics? Yes. yes. Okay, so it's a whole team. How many people yeah. are in your team all together? Right now we have four full-time, mm -hmm. and um, we work with a couple other uh, groups that are in the city as well when we have bigger projects where we need the bodies. Um, the, our psychics and our metaphysical um, assistants, they're not actually members of the team, mm -hmm. but honorary members, we yeah. could call them. Yeah. But so, so there would be another two there. So Now, you do a lot of charity work. We and tried. and yeah. I think usually when people think, okay, well, you're going to spend all this time at my house, you're going to in investigate and research. That takes a lot of preparation, but you don't charge. No. Nope. Um, all our services are completely free. It's something we love doing. It's something we know the terror that can be involved in it, um, the fear, and we want to help people discover what it is in their homes and what they can do. Um, it's all about peace of mind, really. And, uh, and yeah, every time we do an event, portion of proceeds always goes to a local charity. I mean, with our, our local, our uh, Spirit Speak, excuse me, last weekend, um, portion of the proceeds go to the Windsor Youth Center. So we pick something local mm -hmm. every time and everybody benefits that way. So it's your, your business is based on karma. That's a nice way to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is very nice. And it must be a great feeling when you do help some, someone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like, we do car washes throughout the summer, and that's how we keep the team going as well. Um, we need equipment, we need lots of batteries, things like that. So, you know, um, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll do the work and buy what we need, and all the rest goes right back into the community. Not to get personal, but you did have intense experiences, paranormal experiences yourself. H have you ever visited there again, or is it too scary to delve into that? Overcoming the fear is a big part of it. Um, mm -hmm. I've never not returned to a place because I was frightened. Um, it actually intrigues me more. You know? <laughs> I guess that's why you're doing it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think um, my most intense experience at the time was absolutely terrifying. I questioned my sanity at the time, and um, it, it was terrifying. And now I'm almost chasing that, to find that again because I haven't had the opportunity to go back to that location. Um, and I would love to find something like that again so I could delve a little deeper, because that's the, the main reason that I wanted to get into this. Would you ever think of writing a book or doing a script based on that, or do you not want, do you not want to stir things up to that extent? We've tossed around the idea. Um, we'd really like to put together um, a, a book on local history and the hauntings. Mm -hmm. um, it's terrific for Windsor. Yeah. 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 Windsor, Essex mm -hmm. County. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, a great thing about our public hunts as well. Not only do they get to experience ghost hunting, but they learn so much about the history of our area, which is really important. It is, especially with all the rum runners and all the yeah. Yeah, tunnels absolutely. underground. And A-bars. Yes. That's, an, that's an another um, public haunting, haunting place, isn't it? Yes. Yes, Lots we actually of stories. did uh, two, in, two investigations at A-Bars. Yeah. Yeah. And did you find anything interesting there? We, we uh, did uh, collect some interesting EVPs. Mm -hmm. um, had, uh, I think we all had a variety of different experiences throughout the night. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, it was just awesome just knowing uh, you know, that uh, you're sharing the same space that Al Capone probably yes. did a shot at a Canadian club in or something. But yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's just the feeling of being in there. I think one of the, the best EVPs we received from there was um, I had asked what does the future hold in store for this location and a couple seconds later there was a female voice that said fire and um, about Whoa. two weeks later I think it was that one of the bar owners called and said you're not going to believe this we just had a fire in the walls so whether it was a coincidence or not it was still pretty fascinating. Wow that is. If you want to reach Spectral Solutions, you can go to the website at 
w.spectrosolutions.ca. Alex is going to have it right up there on the board. Um, Ouija boards. Now it's Halloween. I think a lot of people are delving into that. What advice do you have pe for people who are not experienced, who do not know how to um, well, play with these powers? To argue with Parker Brothers, it's not a game. Yes. Honestly, um, you should be um, aware of what you're doing, what you could possibly be doing. And uh, there, there have been a lot of mal effects from playing with the Ouija board, and people complain afterwards that they're haunted and something they can't get rid of because they opened a door mm -hmm. and they didn't know how to close it. It's not even necessarily the board itself. I mean, it can be done with just candles and inviting something in. Yeah. Anytime you're opening yourself up to something like that, you you do need to be prepared for what could possibly happen because if there's someone lurking around, they may just want to knock on your door. And how do you protect yourself? Like, do you wear any amulets? Do you is it? it do you almost do a meditation before you go into a place? Yes, we have a universal blessing that we say to protect ourselves, um, asking white light and our spirit guides to be with us. And uh, sometimes we smudge ourselves, depending on the situation as well, to get rid of any negativity. And we always ask whatever may be there to stay there and not follow us when home. When we leave, we let them know that they're not allowed to follow us home. They need to stay where they are. We may come back and visit, but for the time being, they have to stay put. And it's hard to say that when it's actually a family living in the house, but, you know, we're on, we're on the job. We're trying to figure it out for you. You know, um, part of our services does not include taking them home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no strays. <laughs> That's it. As we have our own families at home to uh, keep safe as well. Yeah. Have you ever experienced any attachments that were negative? Like, have you ever had any dreams maybe after? Oh, boy. <laughs> Lots. Mm -hmm. Lots. Um, I'm not sure if you know what sleep paralysis is. Um, when you wake up and you can't move. Yes. Like, your, your brain is functioning and you can see, but you can't move your body. That seems to happen quite often after investigations, like really intense investigations. Yeah, especially very negative investigations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It happens to me um, quite often after negative um, investigations. Where, and it's like you're having a nightmare, but you're awake and you can't move, you can't do anything about it. It's a very frightful experience. I know there's a lot of people out there that have yeah. suffered from it, but it's it's medical, it's really not paranormal. Um, but for some reason, the energy seems to pick up from uh, these uh, negative investigations we've conducted. Do you ever just get any calls from people maybe who someone has passed on that was close to them and that they feel that there is a spirit not negatively, but they just kind of want to know for sure, or to be able to communicate with them. Do you ever? Yeah, um, we have gotten a call mm -hmm. like that, um, and we'll go in and, uh, like Shannon had said, our our best form of evidence is the audio, the EVPs, and sometimes we do get confirmation that the deceased person is present and watching over the family. And in a lot of ways, that can be comforting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, a lot of people say that if it's a friendly spirit or whatever, that you know, uh, they don't have to leave. You don't have to get rid mm -hmm. of them. Um, they're welcome to stay, providing, you know, they, they follow the rules. Well, we've been talking to the team of, with uh, Spectral Solutions, Shannon and Chantel. If you want to get in touch with them for a house clearing, if you're thinking of buying a house and you're not really sure, I think it's a great idea. Because, I mean, there are people who live in houses that have, it's not just um, physical stuff, but all the emotional turmoil. And I think sometimes when you just walk into a house, you could almost feel that energy. Absolutely, yeah. And if you do, it would be wonderful if you could just have that clearing, have it clear and fresh and ready to move in and have your own happy life. Yes. So it, so uh, if you want to get in contact with them, www.spectralsolutions.ca. Thank you so much. This was very interesting. Thank you. Okay, and we're going right back. We're <laughs> doing a commercial and we're going to be right back. Okay. okay. You're watching Nexus TV, streaming live from downtown Whistler for the Whistler Downtown Business Accelerator, and this is Barry on the Go with Derek Goodell. We'll be right back.
You are watching Nexus TV streaming live from Downtown Windsor from the Windsor Downtown Business Accelerator and this is Very on the Go with Very Goodell. We'll be right back. You're watching Nostrum Digital Media, and we're here with paranormal investigators Chantal and Shannon. So, you both have gifts. Did you develop these as children? And does it stop there? Did you do you think that because you were more open that you were willing to accept these things, or do you think that it sounds like you had something not so nice following you? Is that because you were very open to it, and something just clinged on to you? Um, well, I have a, as a matter of fact, I have a few things that uh, seem to be able to see me from the other side. I've captured my name, uh, Shannon, in EVP form at least six, seven times. Really? Yeah. At all different locations. So it's following yeah. her or it's always with her. Or it, it can see me uh, from the other side, whether, you know, I'm not sure why. Um, this is why we still do it, We're looking for answers. But uh, it used to scare me. Now I'm just intrigued. I just want to know who it is. What do you want? Is your garden angel? Yeah. yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think uh, children are definitely more open to it. Um, it's not something that's been learned out of them. Um, they they seem to have imaginary friends, and whether or not it's imaginary or perhaps it's a, a deceased loved one is uh, open to interpretation and investigation, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, I find the more investigations that I go on, the more I'm able to sense things. Um, I, I'm not sure if I grew up with it or not. Um, there's been a couple occasions where it, that could be the case, but uh, with meditation and with constant research and mm -hmm. uh, learning to trust your gut yeah. on these things, and it really comes through. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm just <laughs> baffled. Halloween. Yes. Um, what is the history of Halloween? Why is it so spectacular? Why do people... Um, love hauntings and, and ghosts and spirits. I mean, really Halloween is All Saints Day as well. Yes. So it does have something to do with spirits. Where did the tradition come from? Um, it's an ancient Celt tradition, actually. Um, it was Samhain, which is their new year. Um, mm -hmm. And they believe that October 31st was the celebratory date, and they believe that that's when the veil between the worlds was the thinnest, and between the living and the dead. And they would celebrate the lives of those who have gone before them and celebrate their deceased and set out feasts and everything like that in honor to, to worship the dead, basically, and, and pay homage to the dead. Yeah, it was, uh, there, were, there were hopes that the, uh, their deceased relatives will come back and visit them during Samhain, and also that uh, if they're allowed to come through, then you can get some bad things to come through as well, so that's where Ooh. the, um, the uh, practice of dressing up. Um, the scarier you were, you use that to uh, ward off the spirits. spirits away. Oh, yeah. interesting! I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And the jack o' lanterns interesting. as well. That's yeah. where that came from. Yeah, that that kind of frightens away the evil spirits. So that's where the whole uh, custom of dressing up in costumes came from. Do you feel anything more intense on Halloween? Are there any more investigations? Like, if you went to go, let's say, to um, a bars on Halloween, do you think that you'd be more apt? to send something because it is that thin veil? Right. I We're oh, oh, go ahead. I don't think it's actually the day, the 31st. Right. Mm -hmm. It's um, the period of time. The um, fall equinox, it seems, on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are extremely busy this time of year. Um, once fall hits, I mean, we are book solid. It seems really? like that's when things really start moving. And whether the veil is thinner or not, there it's a good possibility. There's this feeling of them. I'm not sure who can, uh, who's susceptible to it, but I certainly am, and Chantelle is. It's like there's a little point during the fall season where you just feel like there's something wrong with the world. It's almost like you're afraid to be outside. There's such a creepiness, and it's just an energy that exists naturally. And some people are uh, sensitive to it, and others, you know, they don't pay attention, they don't care, right? But yeah. That was something else that we had discovered about each other when we met. Yeah. I've had that feeling once a year in the fall since I was a small child, and Lo and behold, she's had the same feeling as well, yeah. along with my brother. You're, you're so. afraid to be outside in fall, and you can't understand why. Yeah, very interesting. Yes. Activity certainly seems to pick up during this time of year. Well, all connected, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much, Chantel. Thank you so much, Shannon, for you're joining welcome. us. Thanks for having us. And if you do have any.
paranormal investigations. If you need any research done, these are the experts. You can again contact Spectral Solutions at www.spectralsolutions.ca. Have a happy Halloween and trick or treat safely. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy hauntings. Yeah. <laughs>